miscegenation is a pseudoscientific word, which is like a, uh, you know, like a whitewashed way of saying race mixing. Okay, romantic relationships between uh, white folk and black folk, or Jews and non-Jews, that's miscegenation. It occurs there on a massive scale in America. A so-called reform rabbi weds the daughter of Hillary Clinton and no one condemns it, thereby legitimizing it? Like, this is the enemy to him. Like, you know, the rest of the room, I assume, sees this as, oh, Romeo and Juliet, star-crossed lovers, you know, how sweet, love conquers all, you know, but to the Israeli government, this is, you know, everything that they want to prevent. Racial purity. Now, if it was only the right wing, eh, nicha, okay, could understand it. But even the so-called centrist wing of the domination camp, even Isaac Herzog, who is the leader of the Labour Party for the past five years until uh, Avigabai took it over, the leader of the opposition, so-called, on his last day as leader of the opposition, he says, it's an actual plague. I saw my friend's children married or coupled with non-Jewish partners. Listen, it's every Jewish family in the US, and we're talking about millions. There must be a campaign, a solution. We have to rack our brains to figure out how to solve this. Okay. Jewish people and non-Jewish people loving each other is a problem that he has taken it upon himself to solve. This is how sick it gets by the great white hope of the Labour Party. Bichyat. So, of course, it, it wasn't really any shocker for a student of history. That was the Isaac Herzog of today. His grandfather, Isaac Herzog, was the chief rabbi in Palestine in the 1930s and 40s. And at that time, he too was disgusted by miscegenation, what little it occurred. And he wanted to, you know, turn the time back to medieval era when rabbis would send out thugs to cut off the noses of Jewish women who were suspected of dating non-Jews. So he decides to create a committee to protect the dignity of Jewish women, or the purity of Jewish women. And they made lists of which Jewish women, in her words, Yudiot Suot Laravim, Jewish women married to Arabs. They compiled files on them. And then commando groups would go out, hunt those women down in their places of work, in their places of residence, whatever. And in, their, the, in the words of one of these men, describing what he did, upon catching, or sorry, upon catching one of those girls, they would flip her upside down and pour hot pepper into her vagina. Sexual torture for the crime of deciding for yourself what you're going to do with your genitals. No, they, they don't belong to you, ma'am. They belong to the nation. They belong to the God. You know, and of course, he goes on to explain, sometimes there were even more extreme actions than that. None of the people who committed these horrific crimes have ever stood on trial in Israel for what they have done. There has never been an inquiry even and this was contemporaneous with the same thing happening in Nazi Germany, disgustingly enough. This is in the 30s, in the 40s. So, I mean, it's just beyond the pale. And today, is it any different? Well, I don't know of any women who are, you know, have to undergo that horrific uh, torture, but we still have anti-miscegenation groups that scour the country, that patrol Israeli cities and harass and harangue and attack mixed couples to try to prevent romantic relationships. And again, it's the Kahanist ideology that animates it. And now, these anti-miscegenation groups, I mean, until a couple of years ago, they were actually on the government payroll. They were getting government funds to do these activities. Once uh, my colleague at Haaretz, Uri Blau, discovered this, reported on it, exposed it, it was a bit too embarrassing for the government. So since then, they haven't, to my knowledge, fi directly financed the group. But, you know, no big deal. Instead of Netanyahu himself funding Lehava, he just gets Nili Falik, who is his number one funder, the family 
that funds Netanyahu's election campaigns, his number one financier, so she became the largest financier of Lehava, the funder of that miscegenation. So Netanyahu's bag, bag woman is essentially now the new, has become the bag woman for Lehava, the funder of Lehava.